Hi right, guys. It is a lovely but a little bit hot and sticky Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization as the Finger Lakes of New York finally get to join the rest of the planet heading up into the 90s today and I guess it's going to be this way at least for a few days but we could be I guess in British Columbia or Seattle or wherever so I won't complain that we're not in one of those hot desert hot spots anyways it is Sunday morning June 27th 2021 so for today's doomsday sermon I'm just gonna turn it over to my old buddy Robert Hunziker Robert Hunziker uh, journalist Robert Hunziker had him on the show a couple of times we might need to get Robert back here as the summer of 2021 approaches but uh not sure robert you know writes for counterpunch i'm thinking that counterpunch has changed its name to countercurrents.org i'm pretty sure it's the same outfit that used to be counterpunch now countercurrents maybe countercurrents.org is actually going to pay their journalists uh you know, counter punch and I guess counter currents, one of these big lefties always talking about, you know, these cheap, abusive bosses screwing the working man, not paying their, uh, their journalists. Although I know how you feel, Robert. So let's hope that Robert might actually get a $5 paycheck for his efforts. For so what, uh, we're going to get Robert Hunziker's spin on the global heat wave. And, uh, as if we haven't had an, enough news, we're going to let Rob, Preacher Robert sum it up with this headline, Lethal Heat Hits the Planet. <clears throat> and yes, it does. And hitting bugs in a jar farm, I have to get out there and water my petunias looking kind of droopy. The news does not get much worse than a recent scientific report that the planet is trapping twice as much heat as it did only 14 years ago. If this one report, which we've already covered here at Collapse Chronicles, if this one report does not turn heads and create a sense of panic to get off fossil fuels, as soon as yesterday, then nothing will ever move the needle to fix the planet's broken climate system. I think when I finished my own coverage of that, was that the day that I filled up my gas sucking truck and went to the lawnmower repair shop to deal with my gas sucking lawnmower? then went to the chainsaw repair shop to deal with my gas sucking chainsaw. Robert Hunziker, as well as Sancho Panza, knows damn well that this report is going to do nothing to turn one single head, including my own, to create a sense of panic to get off fossil fuels, which is another way of saying nothing. Nothing will ever move the needle to fix the planet's broken climate system. This is why you need to get out there and water your petunias while you still can. <clears throat> Getting back to Robert. Scientists have been warning us about the consequences of human-generated greenhouse gases ever since James Hansen testified before a congressional committee 33 years ago, telling them, quote, the greenhouse effect has been detected and it is changing our climate now, close quote. I actually, I, I, I'm 100% sure this is not a false memory. I remember being in elementary school. See, I was born in 1959, so somewhere around 1965 or 1966, I remember being taught in the Atlanta, Georgia public 
school system about the greenhouse effect. I clearly know that we were being, it had already made its way in to elementary school textbooks uh, in the mid-1960s, so I guess James Hansen just got his fourth grade textbook in 1988. <clears throat> in fact, the warnings have been, oh, in fact, the warnings have been coming for 44 years. Prior to James Hansen's testimony before the Senate committee, the most publicized report came from the National Academy of Sciences in 1977 when it warned us that burning coal would crank up global temperatures to intolerable levels by 2050. Well, here we are in 2021. Meanwhile, a well-orchestrated core of climate deniers, including many members of the Republican Party, current and past for decades, have worked to create doubt about human impact on global warming in order to safeguard the fossil fuel industry and, as a consequence, block effective governmental policies to halt greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, now Robert, I'm not going to argue with most of that sentence, but I am going to take issue with that very last one. There are no effective government policies to halt greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, d despite, if, 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 if the Republican climate deniers had been right on board with James Hansen, okay, uh, today there would be no government policies to halt greenhouse gas emissions. Because, as I've said many times, you're going to have to pry that steering wheel out of my cold, dead hands. Just every one of us on this planet are not going to let go of fossil fuels. Ain't going to happen. And even if we, quote, do, uh, if, if fossil fuels were pulled out of your life, if you have solar panels on your roof, drive your little electric car or your bicycle, your life is dependent on fossil fuels. Uh, all of this talk about political uh, solutions to the climate crisis. Come on, Robert, you're better than that. <clears throat> anyway. Getting back to Robert's uh, sermon, that type of obstructive behavior was formidab formidably demonstrated only recently by former President Donald Trump, along with his entourage like Mike Pompeo, who short-sightedly celebrated Arctic ice loss in an Arctic Council speech. Unfortunately, he described as a positive event the meltdown of the planet's greatest safeguard against global warming, the Arctic ice. And uh, you better believe that Donald Trump is not alone in celebrating the, uh, the melting of the Arctic ice. Uh, you better believe Vladimir Putin is, is more celebrating it than Donald Trump is, uh, taking full advantage of the melting of the Arctic sea ice to ramp up fossil fuel production that is now available. Thank you to the melting ice. As the former Secretary of State, that's Pompeo he's talking about, spoke, the planet was in its final throes of losing its biggest, most important giant reflector of incoming solar radiation, which has been around since humans discovered fire, but now gone in only a few short decades because of human-generated global warming greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels like oil and natural gas and coal. The climate denier class 
especially in America, carries a heavy burden for the current out-of-control status of the planet's climate system. It is beyond shameful that repeated warnings by the nation's scientists have been ignored for decades, leading to the current state of worldwide climate emergency. Deadly heat is tormenting the world. Along those lines, Donald Trump's destruction of environmental agencies and the removal of scientists and destruction of years of irreplaceable scientific data and removal from the Paris Climate Agreement of 2015 will go down in history as the worst timed, stupidest policies in all of American history. Now again, Robert, I am going to uh, diverge a little bit. You know as well as I do, Robert, you know as well as I do, and Donald Trump knows that the Paris Climate Agreement is a sham. It is a joke. It, it is one of the few correct decisions Donald Trump made in four years of, of attacking this planet was pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, we pulled out of the Climate Agreement for all the wrong reasons. Had I been the president of this wonderful country, I would have pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement just in protest that this is a joke. You know that damn well, Robert Hunziker. You've said it yourself many times. Why are you writing this crap? Anyway, I love you, brother. Moving on. <clears throat> Meanwhile, making matters doubly bad and emphasizing the fact that the planet is absorbing twice the heat, NASA reported 2020 as, quote, the hottest year ever, and, by all appearances, 2021 is shaping up to break the records once again as abnormally high temperatures throughout the planet exceed all-time records. The planet is literally in a burn mode like humanity has never experienced, and nobody is doing anything about this burning dilemma with any sense of global reach. Meanwhile, talk of holding back temperature by controlling emissions at the nation-state level remains, like always, very cheap and ineffective, as well as totally remiss of the big picture of a global mess that requires global unity or the lights go out fairly soon here and there all across the land. Confirmation of the studies series data I won't get into that, was established using Argo, which is an international network of sensors in the world's oceans used to measure the rate at which the oceans absorb heat. This strengthened and confirmed the data that the planet is trapping twice the amount of heat as 14 years ago. According to the scientists for that study, quote, the two very independent ways of looking at changes in Earth's energy imbalance are in reality re really good agreement, and they're both showing this very large trend. Close quote. Uh, 33 years after James Hansen testified to Congress, global carbon dioxide emissions have increased by 70% and have never gone down in any given year, always up 
never down. Now there's this big debate about whether they went down last year. Obviously, uh, Robert Hunziker is citing with me that anyone who thinks global emissions went down because of the corona panic got some bad news for you. Now there is conflicting information out there. Uh, I mean, obviously, the little greenies, uh, I'm not going to get off onto that debate whether emissions went down or not last year because it doesn't make a damn bit of difference because if global emissions were, had they hit zero last year and stayed there, it would make no difference from this point forward. Anyway, let's wrap this up, Robert, because I need to go water my uh, wilting petunias. Okay. When Hansen testified fossil fuels were 79% of the world's energy, it is 84% today in the face of every wind turbine and solar panel that has been installed over the past decades ever since Hansen spoke about the dangers of greenhouse gas emissions. Frankly, the world is getting what it deserves and what it has failed to recognize in spite of the world's top scientist warning a lot of heat. Yes, it is. And uh, we are going to do some battle against the heat here in the Finger Lakes of New York, where it was 40 degrees a couple of nights ago. But uh, I guess summer of 2021 has arrived here. But as I say, looking at the rest of this country and the rest of this planet, I'm not going to complain about a uh, cool, crisp 90 degrees at Bugs in a Jar Farm. What do you think, Sancho Bonzo? I just want to get those chippies. Get out there and water your petunias while you still can, while you still have water. My guys. What are your ears doing sticking up in the air like that? When did your ears start sticking up? Looking like a corgi. There you go, you got your ears back down.